Hi everyone, we all all right? Nearly three, rocking. Um, the kettle's just boiled. Make some tea. Overall good. Last bright day. Have a good bank holiday weekend. Uh, tea mate. I've got a little Mr. Man mug today. Bit of a bit of a change. Little Mr. Man. Chilled. Probably coming out backwards, but so uh, anyway. What we're, going to, we're going to talk about work-life balance today. I'll just get a biscuit. I was going to go Jaffa Cakes. I said I was going to go Jaffa Cakes, but I've got some ginger nut. I've got the ginger nut. So, uh, and, uh, oh, big rock. I've got a question. I've got a tea-related question. So I thought, yeah, I know you like a tea-related question, so put, put your answers in the chat while I'm just squeezing my tea bag. Um, so my question is, which country drinks the most tea per head so not what country drinks the most tea per head what country tea drinks the most tea and if you and if you want you can guess how much they drink in pounds you can go in kilos if you like but per year how much do, do the people drink but um what country drinks the most tea so if anyone wants to have a little guess of that put that in and um if matt cross online there's no telling what country he's going to come up with um but Let's see, what country do you believe drinks the most tea per head? And I'll give you a clue. It's not China. I'll give you a clue. It's not China. They do, they do drink the most tea, but not per head. Um, so, uh, okay, so we've got a few. <laughs> and Croft is in. So we've got England, UK. I'll count England and the UK. Uh, Uzbekistan is so close. <laughs> Matt's just answering every question there. That's brilliant. Um, oh, that's 200 pounds. That's the weight. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, both your guesses are ridiculous. Um, so no. Um, if you want to have another guess, I'll let the people who've gone to England and the UK, we're actually third. It's not India either, actually. So, um, and it's definitely not Uzbekistan. Um, so everyone's wrong at the moment. And um, Matt Croft is amazingly the closest at the moment on weight, 200 pounds. Anyway, uh, keep guessing, put them in. What tea, what country drinks the most tea? It's, it's a bit of a surprise, actually. A bit of a surprise. A bit of a surprise. So today we're going to talk about work-life balance. So I thought we'd, uh, we'd do that for a quick 10 minutes, give you the answers, that kind of thing. If people are still joining, what country drinks the most tea per head and how much in weight, if you like? Um, so firstly, um, just to let you know, work-life balance, because it's all changed because now we're working at home. And like back in uh, the start of this year, January, February, there was only about 5% of the nation was actually working at home. And since March, that's kicked in over half, 52% of people now uh, in the UK working at home. Um, it's about 15 million people currently working at home. Um, but bizarrely, of all those people, 60% of people now are suggesting that they work longer now than when they were going to their workplace. So over half of people saying they work more. Um, Nearly a quarter of people are saying they can't relax at home. And um, this is probably the worst bit, that 22% of people uh, are feeling more exhausted and um, they're, they're suffering excessive pressure, so one in four. And there's probably a host of reasons around that, um, certainly around excessive pressure, probably from external things as well. Uh, but one in four people uh, are burning out, um, that kind of thing. And they can't relax. And some of that's to do with a bit of balance, really. So what I'm going to try and do today is, give you, I've just got like about 10 tips about how we can perhaps just get a little bit of balance back in our life. So firstly, what I'm going to say is plan. I mean, this is a bit of a time management tip, but plan. If, if you're with a partner, if you're a home family, sync your diaries. So don't try and go on a day by day basis. Um, plan, sync your diaries, other regular meetings. Like if you're doing tier three all the time, it's brilliant because you can you can put that in your diary and get a reminder in um, 3 p.m. That goes in. And that means we can't schedule something else. So it's important we do work stuff. It's important we do life stuff as well. So that's the first thing. We do have to work around other things. So I know a lot of people out there are homeschooling, stuff like that. So I have to set allowances for time and make sure we're doing those right things. Second thing, um, it's about um, some semblance of routine. It's about the hours you work. You can shift your hours so people can work 10 till 6 or something like that. You can take longer break at lunchtime to do some of the other things I'll talk about to get the work-life balance right. So don't be afraid to work different times. That's got to be balanced, of course, with not working too long or too late. Um, I don't want you to shift around and like work from 11 o'clock at night to 7 in the morning. Um, 
if you're with other people, it's good if you can break together um, and then go for a walk like together, have a lunch together, maybe have a lunch as a family. And that's something that we never used to get the opportunity to do. So utilize that time. And that's where that plan and schedule those diaries are so, are so more, so even more important. Um, if, of course, you're at home alone, then schedule a, maybe a lunch catch up or something like that. That would be quite a useful thing. So you get into that routine, you get into that plan, and that can help the balance. And get out. Of course, last week we were saying, you know, maximize your exercise, but now we've been told that we can exercise as much as we want. I think it's still important we take that that important bit of exercise. I was a bit somewhere, it, it said, um, it said, I'm being told that I can exercise whenever. I currently feel like I've never done so much exercise in my life. I feel like I'm um, actually practicing for the Olympics next year now. Um, so, but, but I'd still suggest you kind of get out. And, and the other thing that happens when you do get out is you see people. And so if you're alone, it's a good thing to do because you'll see people, you'll see smiles. Um, I probably know more of people who live close to me now than I've done in the 15 years that I've lived here. So, so get out. Um, so a few things now. Um, one is, is about turn off work. So because we're all working at home in, in probably an environment that, that wasn't there, um, we can talk about special work at places, uh, but that's not that easy. So turn off, yeah, set an alarm, um, that kind of thing, um, just to say I'm not going to work past this hour. Um, you can do that by a TV program that you want to watch or something along those lines. You can do it for lunch as well. That would be good. Um, you can go into your garden, um, have a little walk around. It clears the head. Um, and it'll help you just relax that little bit more. Um, put your tech away, close your laptop. Don't just close it, turn it off, power it off, shut it down. Mm. Now, one of the things that I do, um, I'm not actually in my workspace at the moment, but where I use my laptop, um, where the plugs are, um, I, ba I basically unplug a lamp and plug my laptop in. And the thing is, when I finish work for the day, what enables me to do is then I take the laptop plug out and put the lamp back in. So there's a very definite end. Now I know it's going to run off battery and I can pick my emails up on my phone and stuff like that, but there feels like there's that closing down of it, which is quite important. You can schedule yourself a, a personal, maybe a virtual meeting, a Zoom meeting or something like that at five o'clock, maybe hit a, 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 um, a virtual class, something along those lines. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> I, you know, another thing to, to turn off from work is, is talk to talk to your partner. If you live alone, then schedule calls with friends. Try and get some regularity in, but don't do just work, 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 work all the time. Make sure you are shutting it down. Um, I think one of the things that people are starting to do a little bit more is uh, keep your weekend sacred. Um, I think more and more now people are saying, oh, I'm definitely not doing work on weekends. There could be some people out there saying, oh, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm still doing quite a lot. But where possible, um, very definitely try and shut it down uh, at five on a Friday or six on a Friday or whatever. I'm aware that some jobs will go longer than that anyway, but but that's something I would certainly go for. Um, mentioned about um, workspaces, and that's that's really that's really hard. Um, you know, we sometimes see uh, people online um, doing various things and. They kind of appear to be in their west wing doing something. And uh, there could be people out there working in, in just one room or something like that. Um, and again, I heard a story of somebody saying that they didn't have a, they, they didn't even have a table. They were just like, working on the arm of their sofa. And uh, but one of the things they, they did, they lived alone, was when they worked, they worked at the other end of the sofa. So they almost had a work end of the sofa and a relax end of the sofa, which is, which is you know, they're, they're just trying to create something that makes it different. And, and I think that's that that's the important thing. It is hard if you live in a small environment or a flat or something like that. If you've got space, got more space, um, a Zoom room, something like that. So if you're with a partner, there is a Zoom room. So if the door's shut, it's like a, kind of like a meeting room and, and you can work it like that. And the other thing, of course, is uh, work, work hard at relationships. Um, you, you know, partners, friends, whatever. Make sure you're setting time aside for those. Um, I'm not a big fan of the phrase date night with my partner. If you're having to set a date night aside with your partner, you might want to question some of those things a little bit. But I think it's it's really important that we do still make time for the person, still ask them about their day, even though perhaps we've been working in the same workspace for the whole time. I think that's still quite pretty, pretty valid. Um, 
Last few things. Um, one is about change. Um, yes, it is a change. So that the way we work and the way we invest time in certain things is going to be different. And um, so it gives us an opportunity to build up resilience for how we work and what we're doing. And uh, I, heard a, I heard somebody talking about, oh, you know, we're on the same boat. And I, I just want to say, really, we're not all in the same boat. Uh, what we are is uh, we're all in the same storm. Uh, but, but many of us are, are kind of bobbing about on different boats um, from like a little inflatable dinghy to a, a fully fledged cruiser. So recognize what you're in and some of the things that you're going through. But everybody is experiencing the same storm. But they're just seeing it through, through a different lens. So, uh, you know, without nicking phrases about be kind to other people, but e equally don't undermine yourself. Um, don't sweat the small stuff and um, the stuff that doubtlessly kept you awake. Um, back in January, um, just, just really is irrelevant now. We can't even think about that. And so I think that's important to get that balance right. Yet yeah, people are under pressure. They're feeling pressure. They're saying 22%. One in four people is feeling excessive pressure at the moment, the way they're working. Speak to people in and around your workplace about what's acceptable and what's not acceptable and try and get that balance back down. Um, rotate roles, rotate tasks, change hours to do that. And um, the big thing, you know, we're working off PCs, we're working off laptops. And the phrase that comes out a lot at the moment is social distancing. And the big thing that I would say is socially distance yourself sometimes from your PC. So step away from the PC. I've said it earlier. Close it down. Stop it. Put it away. Don't just put it on mute or something like that. And set yourself time. Reward yourself if you manage to do with that. And remember to be with the people that you want to be with. Make time for those people. Set meetings in your diary. One diary only. Put personal Zoom calls in. You can just put it in as a Zoom call with Dave or whatever. Yeah, you don't have to say whether it's personal or professional, but you're just blocking out your diary. One diary will help. Get the balance right and assess where your time is going. Keep that kind of diary. Now, they're my 10, they're my 10 tips. They're my 10 tips to get your work-life balance back because I don't want to really see I don't like seeing numbers where people are saying that, uh, 25% people can't relax, 25% are exhausted, 25% are feeling excessive pressure. Um, these are tough times, of course, but, you know, we are resilient people and, and we will bounce back again. Now, the big thing, of course, tea helps us. So who drinks the most tea? So um, this is, I was quite surprised when I found this out, um, but the answer, the biggest tea drinking nation is Turkey. Turkey drink the most tea and they drink maybe seven pounds a year per head, um, which is well ahead. The second nation, I know a couple of people have put the UK in there, but it's actually Southern Ireland, um, and, they're, and they're second. And, and the UK are, in fact, third. Um, so we come in third. And China's way, way down. So, so when I talk about how much tea, but, um, the Brits drink 4.28 kilo um, pounds a year. China's just 1.2, and India, which was an early guest, just 0.7 of a pound of tea a year. They're way down. You know, there's Russia... Um, New Zealand, Egypt, all of those countries are ahead of India and China. So uh, interesting stuff. Um, anyway, uh, what we're going to talk about Thursday is, and, and kind of go, going forward from there, I'm going to give you some tips um, kind of post-COVID. So what a business is going to be looking for, and we've got a variety of skills. And the one we're going to touch on on Thursday, I'm going to have a look at emotional intelligence. There's a belief that it's going to become more and more necessary. We're going to talk about um, EI, EI in the workplace, EI at home. I'm going to have a little talk about that. And then we're going to get ready for learning at work week next week. Anyway, guys, you have a great afternoon. Stay safe. I'll see you on Thursday. Looking forward to it. Enjoy your tea. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.